In this video, we're going to be learning how to convert from standard form into slope intercept form. So you may remember standard form is what is a form where all of your variables are on the same side of the equal sign. We've got the x and the y on one side, and then that constant c on the other side of the equals. Um, in contrast, we have a slope intercept form, which has those two um, numbers. We have the slope, which is m, and the y intercept, which is b. Now, the main thing about slope intercept form is that you've got y by itself. So, when we're converting from standard form into slope intercept form, our main goal is going to be to isolate this y so that it gets into this form where you have y by itself equals everything else on the other side. Now, one reminder is that slope intercept form is really useful for graphing. So there's going to be times when you're given an equation in standard form and it's and we want to convert because that may make it easier to visualize really quickly what that y intercept would be and what the slope would be so we can get a quick picture of what that graph might look like. So that's a common reason for converting from one to uh, the other. All right, so let's just dive into this first example here. Again, the main thing that we wanna do, that really the only thing you need to remember when it converting to slope intercept form is to get y by itself. That's the key. So the way we do this is just by using algebra steps like we would if we were solving for y. So we want the at 6x to go to the other side of the equation. So because we have a negative 6x here, we need to cancel that out by adding 6x to both sides. So on the left-hand side here, that 6x, the, the negative 6x will cancel with the positive. And on the right-hand side, we have 20 plus 6x. Now, those two things don't combine. They're not like terms. 6x has an x in it, 20 is just a, a number. So we'll just write this as 20 plus 6x. Now, this is perfectly fine, 20 plus 6x, but I generally like to write the term with the x in it first. So I'm just going to reorder this really quickly and put 6x in front and then the 20 after that. Again, it doesn't really matter. It's just my preference of always having the x term first and then the number term second. So these cancel out here on the left. So we're left with 2y on the left-hand side. So we have 2y equals 6x plus 20. Okay, so now again, we want to get that y by itself. So our next step is to divide both sides by 2. That'll cancel out the twos on the left-hand side. Now, on the right-hand side, one thing that you can do is just make it into a big fraction and put all of that stuff, 6x plus 20, all over 2. That's perfectly valid. Another way you can think about dividing all of that stuff by 2 is by dividing each term by 2. What do I mean by that? Well, 6x is a term, so I can divide that one by 2. And then 20 is a term. I can divide that one by 2 as well. And I prefer this method because that reminds me to divide every term on that side of the equation by that 2. So I don't forget or leave anything out. So we've got the 2's canceling out here. Now we're left with y equals. And now I'm just going to simplify each of these terms. So 6x over 2, I'm just going to focus on the numbers here. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that simplifies to 3, and then the x comes along with it. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So we have 3x plus 10. And that's our final answer because we got y by itself. So here is our equation in slope intercept form converted from that original equation which was given in standard form. So let's try another problem now. So again, we want to our goal is always to just get y by itself. So looking at this next problem, we have 5x plus 3y equals 15. I'm going to start by moving the x term to the other side. So this time my x term is positive. So to cancel it out or move it over, I have to subtract that 
positive 5x will cancel with a negative 5x. Now if I do it on the left side, I've got to do it on the right hand side as well. So here, those cancel. I'm left with 3y on the left hand side equals, and again, I just want to combine these two, even though I, I can't combine the like terms, so I'm just going to write them next to each other. Negative 5x plus 15. All right, so our next step is to, again, we want y by itself, so now we'll divide both sides by three. So I'm gonna remember to divide every term by three. So here my threes cancel out, leaving me with just that y left over, which is exactly what I wanted. So we have y equals, now here, we have this fraction, negative 5x over 3. That doesn't simplify like it did in the last problem. So we're just going to write the fraction all together, negative 5 over 3, and then write the x next to it. Think about it. We're converting to slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. That number in front of the x is our slope, our m. Well, slope is just rise over run. So it's okay when we get a fraction like this. This is literally our rise of negative five over our run of three. So that is totally, totally fine to get a fraction uh, when you are dividing by three like this. All right, so then our last step is to do 15 divided by three, which equals five. So once again, here's our final answer. And notice it's in y equals mx plus b form, slope-intercept form. One more example, and then we're done. For this last example, we have 12x minus 4y equals 10. Again, our main goal is to get y by itself. So you see this pattern. We're always going to start by moving that x term over to the other side of the equal sign and then dividing by this number in front of the y. So let's start by moving it over. We have 12x, so we can move that over by using the opposite sign, negative 12x. So those cancel out. So we're left with this negative 4y on the left equals, and then we'll write all of this together in one line. Oops, there we go. Negative 12x plus 10. So now we want to get that y by itself by dividing both sides by negative 4. So I'm going to divide every term by negative 4. So over here, those fours will cancel out, leaving me with just the y. And then here, notice that I've got this negative 12x divided by a negative four. So it's really important that you pay attention to those negatives here um, because it's, it can be very easy to, to miss the fact that you've got a negative divided by a negative, making it positive. So negative 12 divided by negative 4 gives us a positive 3x. And then here we have positive 10 divided by negative 4. Well, that's a fraction that will simplify to negative 5 over 2. And that's okay. We can have a y-intercept that is a fraction. So uh, that is okay to get a b value, which is a fraction. So there is our final answer for that one. So that's it. Whenever you're converting from standard form into slope-intercept form, you're just going to follow these algebra steps of getting y by itself. Move that x term over and then divide by the coefficient in front of y. That, and that's it.